Hello and welcome to the 2007 Tour of Britain. This year's event stretches over seven days with these 101 riders racing through the countryside with one goal in mind, to be wearing yellow in Glasgow at the end of the tour. It's the start of a gruelling week for the 17 teams, starting with a prologue time trial at Crystal Palace before racing down to Southampton on the south coast and out around Exmoor in the West Country. There are stages through the rural West Midlands and the rugged Yorkshire countryside before racing up through the Lake District. Then we cross the border for a finish in Glasgow, rounding out a race of nearly a thousand kilometres through 18 hotspot sprints and over 17 categorised climbs. Last year's winner was Denmark's Martin Pedersen and this year the CSC rider returns to try to become the first man to successfully defend his Tour of Britain crown. 24-year-old Martin Mascant makes his Tour of Britain debut with the Rabobank Continental team. He's the number one ranked rider on the UCI European Tour from a strong showing early in the season. Robbie Hunter made history this summer by becoming the first African rider to win a stage on the Tour de France, finishing first in Montpellier. The 30-year-old South African sprinter leads the Barlow World team. At just 21, Geraint Thomas was the youngest rider to take the start at this year's Tour de France in London. A veteran of two Tours of Britain, the Welshman is a former junior world champion and has shown great potential on a variety of terrains. Mark Cavendish, a 21-year-old from the Isle of Man, rides his third Tour of Britain, having won the overall points competition last year, and so far this season has eight victories to his name. 24-year-old Linus Gerdeman makes his Tour of Britain debut, fresh from a stunning stage victory on the Tour de France. 33-year-old Roger Hammond has ridden all three of the previous editions of the Tour of Britain, winning stages in each of the last two years, while riding for the Great Britain team. This year Hammond will be in the magenta of T-Mobile and is looking to recapture his early season form. And so to the first two and a half kilometres, a circular course around the National Sports Centre at Crystal Palace with a small Category 3 climb which will give four riders points towards the polka dot jersey as leader of the King of the Mountains competition. The bikes the riders use in the time trial are quite different to the ones you'll see later in the week out on the road. The technology involved is very sophisticated. Cycling has come a long way since the days of penny farthings and steel frames. The sport has evolved into a slick, high-spec affair, all in the pursuit of those fractions of a second. The best teams in the world make just as much use of technology and testing as some of the best Formula One teams, whether it be in wind tunnel, CAD, computer assistance, or stress analysis. Today's bikes are lighter, stronger, and generally more reliable. And a lot of the reason is because of the intelligent use of materials. One thing that's perhaps not immediately obvious when you look at the bikes is just how light they are. For instance, this frame is lighter than this loaf of bread. Most of the bikes are a combination of either just carbon fibre, carbon fibre and aluminium. There's also the regulations of the UCI to keep in mind. There's the minimum weight, uh, there's also the measurements we have to keep in mind. And so and we're right on the, on the edge of technology and we're keeping within the rules. And technology fundamentally means better aerodynamics. The way in which aerodynamics of the bike can be improved are primarily through uh, wheels. The wheels can be a reduced number of spokes or even a solid looking wheel uh, to help it slice through the air. But also the frame itself can be made more efficient, more slippery. And in conjunction with uh, aerodynamic handlebars, it allows the rider himself to get into a more aerodynamic position. Well, the technology is all well and good, but it's what the riders do with it that counts. As the time trial gets underway, we can join our commentary team, Rob Hales and Hugh Porter. Thank you very much indeed, Jill. Well, Crystal Palace is the setting here for this 2.5 kilometre time trial. It equates to uh, roughly 1.62 miles. And the route is round the old motor racing circuit that passes the athletic track and the aquatic centre. They get away out of the starting house and then it's downhill where they'll pick up a lot of speed and then it's all about maintaining it. There is a time section as well and the quickest in the time section will be given the Eon King of the Mountains jersey. Well, Frantisek Rabon, the 29 starter, actually set the standard and here he is in the closing stages, stopping the clock at 2.32.03. 
And next to him at almost three seconds was Daniel Contrini of Tinkoff, David Blanco from the Dudja Tavera team at three seconds almost, Andy Tennant of Great Britain fourth, and then Matt Goss in fifth spot. This is Garen Thomas on the hill section. Be interesting to see how Garen goes this week. He's uh, one of our current World Team Pursuit champions. He's got the Tour de France, his first ever Tour de France, still in his legs, I would imagine. So uh, hopefully he'll be able to pull something out. Now, this is Luke Roberts. He's an Olympic Games gold medalist from Athens for the Team Pursuit. And Roberts is pretty quick as he gets underway. He's on the downhill section. Here comes Thomas then up to the line. Let's have a look at the uh, time here for Thomas. It's uh, looking pretty impressive to me. Oh, quick. Second place for Thomas. Good ride there, 232.17. Robbie Hunter, who won a stage in the Tour de France and finished second in the green jersey competition, next to go. Very, very fast rider is Robbie, um, as we've said, up there in the Tour de France in the sprints. So this, this should be very interesting. It's a very, very fast circuit. It's quite twisty, but exceptionally fast. So it should suit him down to the ground. He's on the same team uh, as Thomas for Barlow World. And now this is Romain Feu for the Agritabel team coming in. Good ride there by uh, Feo, and he's a big sprinter. We're going to hear a lot about him in the Tour. Luke Roberts on the timed hill section. Just nearing the summit, Roberts, as we sight Serov of the Tinkoff team. This is one of the powerful Russians, comes from a, a junior track background, so this should be a good time. Oh, he takes the lead. So Serov uh, has taken the lead away from Rabon, who sat at the top of the leaderboard for some 54 minutes. Back to Robbie Hunter. Now then into the starting house, and we're looking at Mark Cavendish. He's got the race face on here, Cavendish, as he tees himself up for a tilt to trying to win this prologue. He is a fine track rider, former World Madison champion. He partnered the man alongside me, so this short course will suit the sprinter. Well, I tell you what, Hugh, if he makes it round the bends, he's going to be uh, right up there today, I'm sure of that. Now Cavendish really fired up now, getting that gear spinning. The next man to finish will be Luke Roberts. Here he comes, Roberts. Roberts is on a stormer as well. Coming up to the line, what's he going to stop the clock at? Let's have a look. Oh, Roberts goes second. 231.85 as we get back with Cavendish on the course. And he's spinning that gear and he gets out of the saddle to try and inject more pace. Cav here seems to be fighting all the way round. This is Ed Clancy, a World Team Pursuit champion. The 22-year-old from Huddersfield sights the line. Final metres for Clancy. Clancy now, fifth place for him, 233.38. Last year's winners now in the starting house, Martin Pedersen from Denmark, the 24-year-old. Quite interesting here. I see he's riding uh, a normal bike, which uh, I, don't, I don't know why, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So he hasn't elected to use uh, a bike, a low-profile bike with the aerodynamic bars. So Pedersen sets about uh, the task ahead of posting a good time in the time trial. Here comes Robbie Hunter. Hunter, the specially sprinter, up to the line. Sixth place for Hunter, 234.18. Now, this is Cav, absolutely burying himself up the time section. The quickest over the time section in this uh, test against the clock will, of course, receive the King of the Mountains jersey. As we look at the Australian coming in, Zachariah Dempster. Oh, good ride. Second, 231.46. Pedersen seems to be fighting his bike a little bit here. I really don't understand why he's not got uh, a low profile. I, or it is a technical circuit, but uh, there are some very fast sections on here. Now then, back with Mark Cavendish. He's got the line in his sights now, the sprinter extraordinaire. Cavendish, this is going to be really quick. This could take the lead. Cavendish goes into the lead, 227.61. If my calculations are right, Rob, that is something like 39 miles an hour. That's pretty quick, Hugh. Here is Nikolai Trusov, another talented young Russian on the Tinkoff team. Second spot for him, 228.82. So one more rider to come in. This is Martin Pedersen, the winner of the Tour of Britain last year. And he doesn't look too good to me. I think looking at the clock, he's going to be something around about 10 to 15 seconds slower than the Manx Express, Mark Cavendish. 63rd then for Pedersen. Confirmation of today's result then. Mark Cavendish leading the general classification, finishing ahead of two Russians, Nikolai Trusov and Alexander Sirov, riding for Tinkoff credit. Geraint Thomas in seventh place and Ed Clancy in eighth, making it a good day for the British cyclists. 
Mark Cavendish pulls on the yellow jersey, his ninth win of the season, a popular winner here at Crystal Palace and the first British rider to wear yellow in the race in its current form. He also leads the Eon King of the Mountains competition, a first for the young sprinter after a very gentle climb in South London. Really thought I hadn't done too well and I came rolling in the car park and they're like, yeah, you're the fastest down. And I was like, whoa, okay. You know, it's, it's not, it's not a surprise that I've won it. I wasn't expecting it, but you know, my track background, two and a half K is actually quite a good distance for me. So, you know, although I'm a sprinter, you know, you're sprinting 250 the last meter, you've got to be there the last few kilometers. So you're constantly on a high, a high wattage, you know, for the last two and a half K of a road race. So I just put it into a time trial and yeah, there we go. Yellow jersey, not, not a bad way to start the week. I know, it's, it's good, you know. We're in the Algiers, I think the surprise is the King of the Mountains. I think it's the first King of the Mountains I've ever, <laughs> I've ever won, really. Yeah, it'll be brilliant, you know, we've got a good team here and I'll be proud to be wearing the yellow jersey tomorrow in the first road stage.